All right, can everybody see our marker board pretty decently? Yes. All right, so welcome, welcome. Um, you're going to hear from both myself uh, on this recorded segment, the part that I'm recording today, and then you're going to hear separately from Marky with a lot of really good content. But this is actually a new class that I'm teaching, and it's called the 12-month marketing calendar. And here's, here's why. How many of you guys right now already have a business plan for 2018? Couple of you, okay, that's good. I would hope that every hand gets raised. I know those of you guys that are exit strategy, you raise your hand because you, I'm making you do them. I'm begging you to do them. And we want you to succeed. At our office, what we've seen, our evolution of business plans has been when we first started doing the business plans, first of all, at one point we had no business plans. I'm like, oh, hope you have a great year. And that was our business planning. So shame on me for that. Uh, eventually we got really into putting our business plans together. Five to seven strong, solid objectives for the year, things that we individually were gonna focus on. And we had an in income goal, an objective statement, and then those five to seven things. And we come together as a group and everybody would pick out what they wanted to do, and that was great, and we were motivated, and it was December. And then come March, April, I'd see people around the office, some were doing their plan and they're making money and they're happy, and other people were like, oh, I'm not doing very good. I'm like, well, let's get your plan out. And what we figured out was if we don't revisit that plan regularly, that plan isn't gonna happen. And so that was our next evolution, was we started doing 411 accountability and goal setting. And so that every week people were able to come back to their business plan and their yearly, monthly, and weekly objectives towards that business plan. And all this stuff, if you're going, I don't know what any of this stuff is, that's okay, it's all on my LinkedIn blog. So I've got a blog on LinkedIn and I've got a YouTube channel for you. And if you think my content's okay, you should see Marky's because there's like 10,000 times the content and quality of the content that I've got. But I'm, I'm a baby in this, I'm learning. So that's some resources for you. So that was our next evolution. And then last year, I had some people come up with the most amazing business plans. I think some of the best business plans we've ever had at Exit. And I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. But, but, we had some people that came up with, well, I'm gonna do this over time, I'm gonna do this every month, and they come out in January, they'd have a home buyer seminar. February, they might or might not, and by March, they were, the minute it got warm out, nothing was happening. Or they had a mailing campaign. Yeah, I'm gonna do a 12 month mailing campaign, or a 33 touch campaign, for those of you guys that know what that is. I'm gonna do it. And it was like halfway through the year, nobody was doing half of this stuff that they said they were going to do, less than half. And I was shocked, I was ab absolutely embarrassed actually. And so I became, about two years ago, part of a program called CORE. And in CORE, they teach you, and it is a, I call it non-denominational, it's from no brokerage, it's a part of every brokerage, um, that uh, you can be of any brokerage brand or independent, uh, it's for realtors, and it's also, there's a division for lenders. And what it is, is, I gotta be honest with you, very simple stuff. A lot of it's pen and paper and marker boards. And what they said is, you can put a business plan down on paper, and they're like, Nick, we love your 411, that's great. They're, what you're missing is a 12 month marketing calendar. So last year I did a 12 month marketing calendar, except mine turned into a vacation planner. And it had all the time I wanted off and where I was gonna go and all that great stuff. But the couple things that I did put down on that 12 month marketing calendar actually happened. And in the meantime, um, a team in my office, Andy and Natasha, for those of you guys that know some of the people in our office, Andy and Natasha did a 12 month marketing calendar fully broke down what they were going to do month by month and then did it to perfection and i said oh that's what the 12 month marketing calendar is is supposed to look like so we said moving forward we're not going to do this mess of here's a business plan you can't find and eight months later you know there it is under your desk or any of this other stuff what we're going to do is we're going to lay it out so what i've given you today is i've given you a 12 month marketing calendar all I put on there is holidays. We're gonna talk about what the significance of holidays is later. But I want you to map out and go home with an idea of what you're going to do for the next 12 months. But I didn't wanna just be about that. I wanted to create theme days because this again is something that they're teaching us in core. Is that this is a lot easier to do if things have a theme and it's repetition. So if your newsletter, for example, comes out the first Tuesday of every month, it kind of gets drilled into you, just like an exercise program. How many of you guys have some great New Year's resolutions for exercise? Okay, not too many hands, that's a lie. All right, I know. Um, everybody's got some sort of great New Year's resolution, but if you don't create a habit out of it, it's very hard to keep. So 
what we've done, and this is another light bulb, I'm not the brightest bulb, um, it takes me a while to get some things. And one thing that it took me a long time to figure out was we have a CRM product uh, at our office that we buy for our agents called Promo Shop. And when we first started using it, it was kind of a mess because people would send out their newsletter and it would look different and somebody else's was spelled wrong and then the month was off and all this stuff. And then the technology provider said, well, they're gonna automatically come out now the first Tuesday of every month. And I said, well, what do you mean automatically? How can we adjust that? Because that's not gonna work for everybody's schedule. They said, no, that's when they're going to come out. Because then you, as the coach, Mr. Owner, you are going to be able to tell your people when it comes out every month. It's on a calendar for you. And so you backtrack from there and say, okay, five days ahead, I'm gonna remind everybody. We're gonna pick out some articles that they can use. We're gonna retrain everybody every time. And I'm like, this is the most terrible thing ever. And I was gonna turn the thing off and credit, cut up my credit card. And then it happened the first month. And all of a sudden people started to collaborate and do things together. And actually the newsletters improved in quality. And I'm like, okay, I think we're onto something. So what we're now suggesting, and I always say suggestion because you all own your own businesses, you're independent contractors. Last time I checked, nobody's on W2 here, including myself. We're all independent contractors at our companies. You can do whatever you want. But what I'm gonna tell you I think would be the best choice would be if you follow what's on this first page and what we're gonna break down here. Because if you can create a culture at your office of my newsletter goes out this day, my postcards go out this day, this is Mailer Monday, my blog is every month the same Thursday, that you start to get a habit either for yourself or here let's even think bigger. What we're doing at Exit is I'm saying to the agents, let's collaborate. We've got a graphic designer so he knows in advance that he's got to do these steps on this day. If it's a just listed, just sold card, if it's a blog, if it's a video, everybody's kind of collaborating a little bit, that there's a little bit more sin. And by the way, uh, if you guys didn't notice, I'd like to coordinate things. We got a purple pen to match the purple outfit today. <laughs> Mark and I accidentally, we swear, accidentally had the same outfit on, uh, the same color scheme today. But I'm gonna coordinate here, and I'm gonna say, okay, my e-newsletter, if my pen would work. All right, we're not gonna coordinate. We're gonna have a different color. We're gonna do brown, so e-newsletter. What you're gonna notice with all this is that we are gonna stretch across every possible media and every possible audience group in the course of this month. So another thing, learning from mistakes. Um, I'm a pretty transparent person. I think that's pretty, for those of you guys that follow me on social media or we're in coaching, I'll tell you everything I've done wrong and I have, a, I have mastered doing things wrong. <laughs> And so I figured out how things do work by doing it wrong. Now I could have listened to the coaches that I'm paying two grand a month for, but why, why not? Why do that when you can actually mess up and then have to go back and admit that they were right? So I did stuff wrong, and back in the day, all I'd do is email. And I'd focus only on, I'd say, well, everybody's getting my emails. That's my touch. They don't want a phone call from me. They don't want a text message. They don't want an invite to a training or a webinar or a seminar or an event or a party. This is enough. No, it's not. People unsubscribe. Mm -hmm. People's emails bounce back, they change their emails. People clean out their inboxes and don't read what you send them. But your basic, I can guarantee you that almost all of us have more, what, emails than anything else for people. This is our starting point. So the e-newsletter is the starting point. Actually, walking in, I'm gonna call her out, not because she's late, because she and I really have learned this together. Lana from our office, Lana and I have two of the largest databases in our office. Lana does more deals uh, in, in units than most anybody else in our office. Lana and I have very large databases, and we were, we were very proud of that. Oh, well, you know, my, my newsletter goes out to 10,000 people. Mine goes out to 15,000. What we found out was, though, because we were only doing this and not what we were doing the rest of the month, was that we actually had some very shallow relationships, or not relationships, with some of our database. Is that we had to kind of bring it back in. We had to bring it back home to our VIPs, to the past clients, and we're gonna talk about the week as well as the month before we get done today. Um, but that first Tuesday of the month, that's your e-newsletter. So that takes time to prepare. That takes time to think about who do you need to add, what do you wanna say. Now, I'm not gonna go into CRM products because that normally starts fist fights and, and food fights and things like that. I like the CRM product that I provide to the agents at Exit. I know some people love Top Producer. I was a never able to figure it out. Um, I don't care what you use, figure out what CRM product use for, works for you and use it. 
So the e-newsletter goes out the first Tuesday of every month. Then the next thing that's gonna happen, I try to space stuff out too, so you're not overwhelmed. The last thing you wanna do is have two activities going on at the same time. I don't know about you, but I have a habit of not hiring the best assistants because I don't always use the disc test. And uh, sometimes I happen to hire my friends and we hang out, we have a great time, nothing ever gets done. So I'm gonna make sure that if nothing's getting done, that at least this stuff is spaced out. So I'm never trying to ask you guys to do two activities at once, if that makes sense. You guys follow me so far? Yeah. Getting head nods, that's good. All right, second Monday of the month. So we had first Tuesday's the e-newsletter. Second Monday of the month, I'm big on theme days. What's Monday? Mailer Mondays. We have Mailer Mondays and, Mar and Money Mondays at Exit. So Mailer Mondays are when you send your farm piece out. So this farm piece, now so your e-newsletter is gonna to go to your entire database. And by the way, if you are a little bit farther towards the back, feel free at the end to come and take a picture of this, because I am too, because it's the first time I've done this on a marker board. So, so far you, all you've got is my squiggly notes. So uh, this Monday farm piece, this is gonna to go to your geographic farm. So this is not gonna to go to your friends and family. They already know you're breathing. This is gonna to go to your geographic farm. And if you wanna know about what my thoughts are on where a geographic farm should be, read my LinkedIn blog, I've got a conversation. This is your 12 month farming campaign. This is your geographic farm to maybe some people in your neighborhood that you wanna target, that your subdivision, your street, I don't care who it is, how many people it is, you gotta hit them 12 times in order to make a relationship. Marky? Uh, just to add, we also have face-to-face um, -face training, but online training. Yesterday, Carrie did a video for us in equity, and I'm going to layer that with the MMRP fund for Grand Boulevard because I know that I can get buyers $15,000 to buy that house. So we have a video for you so you can dig deep on that geographic farm. Yeah. And this goes back to, you know, the touches, where are they coming in? So this was, what was this? An email. I'm gonna say email. I'm gonna make this very clear up here on this because this is the first time I'm writing this. Email. Second thing we're doing for the month, mail. I put a stamp on it. When was the last time you got a direct mail piece from another realtor? Marky just told you. I gotta tell you, I live in a, uh, a neighborhood that's got some pretty darn nice houses and some not so nice houses. I very rarely get a piece of mail from another realtor and when I do, it's not very good. Now, I'm not gonna mention any names or brand names of people, but I gotta tell you, I am not impressed by the very rare mail I do get, and there's Marky sitting with all the equity in her house, and she's getting no mail. That is a lost art. All right, next thing we're gonna do. So we're walking within this second week, so I'm giving you a break, and then on the second Thursday of the month, we are going to do a video. I am begging you to start doing videos. Um, when I started doing videos, my social media came back to life. It was like people had seen enough for me, they knew what I was gonna post, this, the regular stuff. This, by the way, is not a social media calendar. You should be posting stuff every day. You've got closings going on, you've got open houses, you've got price reductions. Your day-to-day -day real estate life, interest rates went up the other day, hope you talked about it. Other stuff's going on in the market, hope you're talking about it. This is not that calendar. This is your 12 month overall calendar. I hope that certainly that you are posting on social media in between them. But what I know you're not doing, because very few agents are, you are not doing a video. And this video is going to be to social media. But boy, can you repurpose it. You guys know me. I'm taping this right now. So this is on Facebook Live in our private office group. It will be downloaded. It will be on my YouTube channel so you can watch my orange face over and over again for the next couple <laughs> weeks. And guess what? If it was an educational video to a consumer, so if you go on my YouTube channel, very easy, it's at Nick Liber. If you go to my YouTube channel, any video that I've done that's in the consumer education part, if I'm driving down the street and my client goes, what if this place doesn't appraise out? You know what, I'm driving right now, but I can send you a video on it real quick. Watch the video and let me know what questions you have. 90% of the time, they don't have any questions because that video answered it for them. And by the way, who else has a video? On with if your property doesn't appraise out, Marky, keep your hands down, because I know Marky probably does. No, I don't. Literally, very few agents are harnessing video. So it's reminding people you're the expert. You are the person in your area. So this is not just your typical video. This is gonna be a listing video on a listing that you've already got or an educational video. If you do not have a green screen, go get one. 
We've got one at our at the here at the Northwest Indiana Satellite right upstairs, and we've got one right sitting. It takes up its own room in the Chicago office on North Avenue. I feel that strongly about it. I hope you're using it every day. Lana? Um, one of the educational ones, I think it's Mark B. Sparky, say to repurpose all the time. Someone repurposed mine from their rememory or something on Facebook, and I just got two meetings in like two weeks that were going out this week from someone else purposing my education. I didn't even remember I did the video. Uh, that is that's an amazing comment and by the way if you can't think of something to say in your monthly e-newsletter if the CRM product is ed decent at all it will allow you to embed at least a link probably not a video because only bomb bomb does that right now but at least a link so I have a link so if you're in my newsletter list already January's newsletter is it's tax time let's use your tax repeat not on that flat screen but on your first housing investment and guess what I already shot that video last year sent it out last year but I'm gonna repurpose it and send it out again this year. So you repurpose these things over and over again. If you don't have something to say one day, look in your library if you're building it. And here's what I realize is valuable about this 12 month calendar. This over time will become much, much easier for you to implement because slowly it's not only becoming habit, you're building a library. You're building a library. So yes, the first couple months, you only have a couple videos up, that's okay. You only have a couple blog posts up, that's okay. I'm not expecting you to take three weeks off I hope you don't have the time to take three weeks off and write a library of blogs all at once. It just doesn't happen. But people say, well, I'm only gonna have one or two at a time. That's fine, because we're building a library because we know, guess what? It's gonna happen over 12 months because we've got the 12 month calendar laid out. We're gonna have some accountability. All right, next thing we're gonna do, third Monday. So I gave you a, a breath there, a couple days off from postage world. We're back with postage. It's Monday, the third Monday. We're gonna do just listed and or just sold cards. Now this does not go to the same people above. That was your geographic farm. This goes to the neighbors around the property that you just listed or you just sold. And people have asked me, they said, well, why do you have a specific day for that? Wouldn't you just do that as the listings come in? I would, but will I? No, thank you for being honest because I'm shaking my head no too. I have all the just sold card templates that our graphic designer did. All I had to do was email him and tell him that. I couldn't even email the exit graphic designer. Nope, didn't do it. So now I have it on my calendar to say, okay, I've had four sales this month. I better get four postcards out. Because guess what? It doesn't matter if it was yesterday or three weeks ago. It was just sold to the neighbors because they're not tracking it as close as you. So that just sold or just listed card comes out the third Monday of the month. Then we walk down again to our third Thursday of the month and we have our blog. Now, if you guys are already my friend or my connection and you look at what I posted at 12 o'clock, may or may not have been on 94 driving over here when I did it, um, I just did my latest blog post. So if you guys are anywhere near the blogging atmosphere, you know that it's kind of tough to figure out what to blog about. I've got about 35 topics from my past articles and videos and things like that that you can steal from me, steal my content, but I'm gonna actually take it to the next level. I've changed my mind on how I'm gonna blog because I'm vlogging, I'm doing the videos with subject matter on education and listings. My blog is gonna be building me more per uh, permanent connections with people. How often do people say, well, who should I use as my lender? Who's a good attorney? Who's a good inspector? Who's a good insurance agent? And we just keep handing those numbers out over and over again, digging through our phone, driving down 94, 90, or whatever road you're on, and we're not really having a conversation with those vendors and those lenders that we're giving business to. I have those conversations now, and they're powerful. And I say, hey, guess what? I love you, I love your service. You're gonna be one of several people I put on my blog. But I would love to highlight your services. How can you highlight mine? And we're gonna have that conversation because we're all giving away a lot of business to people that I don't get so much as a thank you. And we need to be thanked. We need to be thanked in the form of business. And we also, quite frankly, I wanna keep that quality up. So if you are on my blog, that means you are a lender or vendor that has a certain level of service. And the minute that you drop the ball, you are off my blog. So I use my blog to help people, and I also use my blog to keep it up in terms of level of service, and also going back to that repurposing, 
guess what? That is the easiest thing to sit there and say, guess what? Yes, all that information is on my blog. So I just started my blog and I call it Nick's Picks. And all it is, is literally my market leader, which is our front end website at Exit. It's got a blog component to it. Very few people even know how to use it yet. And I'm just sitting there and I've got like every month, I'm gonna do one new person. So the third Thursday of the month, guess what's happened? There it is. So I'm not asking you to, again, overnight do the entire blog series because then you're taking away time from your two hours a day of prospecting. That's a whole nother class. We won't go there today. But for the purposes of this, do one blog a month. You can't be sitting there talking every day about a new vendor anyway. People are gonna be like, what is this? You know, are you guys paying? To, you know, are you guys getting paid to do this? No, this is a casual relationship builder. So that blog, that's gonna be your vendor or your neighborhood. Think about this. What if you ended up blogging about a different neighborhood you love every month? Neighborhood focus. You know, if you're new at this and that's scary to think to go knock on doors and start building relationships with vendors, which you better, but if that's scary to you, what about neighborhoods? Mm -hmm. So think about that. But every month on the third Thursday of the month, that's your blog. So look at what I did. It's very, very simple and you can probably do a lot better job than me. All right, we're walking again. Um, you've noticed I've left Wednesdays alone so far, but not for long. So Wednesdays, one of the coolest changes in my business since I started working with Core, one of the most profound changes was that I started doing two things. I started educating and I started celebrating. I started educating and I started celebrating. And I had to pick a time for it. So I started doing that, but it was very haphazard. Ooh, you know, I better thank people. Ooh, I better talk to people about the business. What I'm doing now is the fourth Wednesday of every month, this is my seminar or social. So my seminar or my social. Now, if I was really, really on point, which I'm probably not there yet, I would have a seminar and a social. I'd have a happy hour once a month and I'd have a social event. This calendar to me is looking pretty full. I coach agents, I'm an investor, I'm doing this. You guys have families, you guys have other businesses, you guys got this. I'm not trying to overload you. In the long run, eventually it would be great if you had both a seminar and a social. But right now I'm gonna say, for this year, for 2018, if you and I are connected on social media, you will see a seminar or a social for the month. The social celebrates your VIPs, celebrates your current clients. It's getting people in a room together and saying thank you for being my referral army. <coughs> the seminar, very clearly that's a seminar. That's gonna teach people something about the business. Whether it's about different financing options, cleaning up your credit, buying your second property, doing rehab work, whatever that conversation is, this is when it happens, the fourth Wednesday of the month. Why is it so important to have it done like this instead of the wrong way, like I did it before, where haphazardly I'd figure out, oh, I should do something, and I'd rush to get something together? What's that most realtors are not good at? Organization, I know but also logistics. We hate it, I'm the worst at logistics. What does the seminar or social require a lot of? Logistics. So if I've got it on the calendar and I know that's looming ahead of me, four to six weeks out, I've got this stuff planned, then I'm okay. And since you've got an entire 12 month calendar, now I'm sitting up here with this marker board, about a third of the size, there are those marker boards that have the entire 12 months on a dry erase board. If you're at our office, you see that in my office sitting there half full at this point, got to finish up. I would like to say, okay, I'm going to have, for example, my January on the, that last Wednesday or the fourth Wednesday of the month, because some months have five, I'm doing a celebration. So I am having a social, thanking my current past clients, my referral army, it's gonna be publicized so the rest of the world can see. Well, you know what, if you were working with Nick, you would've had this cool event to go to. But since you did, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> kind of kidding. Um, that I'm gonna do a uh, Barry's boot camp, and I'm gonna have it free for all my clients. And that is what I'm gonna do. The next month, I'm gonna have a home buyer seminar of some sort, but it's gonna be targeted. And so for the entire month prior, I know about it. I can talk about it on the off days, it could have gone out of my e-newsletter to my entire huge database, like me and Lana have, rocking these massive databases. But in the meantime, and we're gonna talk about this more in a second, we have all these days during the week that we're supposed to be calling people. You got, how many guys are doing, honestly doing two hours a day of lead generation? I didn't raise my hand either. 
but we have to get there. There is a program I'm starting with our office called 90 Days to Greatness. And that is a challenge starting January 1st. I literally am taking a plane back from my little New Year's Eve escape early to be here with everyone to make sure we are on the same page, that we are doing two hours a day of lead generation. And you have to fill out what's called a greatness tracker. And the greatness tracker makes you make the phone calls and the text messages and the personal notes that you're not doing right now and the break breads. There's a whole nother video that I've got on that. But what that's gonna force us into doing is talking about some of the stuff that's going on. I hate cold calling. Is anybody in here like cold calling? If you, you do, all right, get out. No, I'm just kidding. All right, don't lie to me. All right, I hate cold calling. I can't stand it. I don't even want to talk to some of my friends sometimes. But do you have a problem inviting someone to something cool? No. Nope. I got something cool for you at the end of the month. Would you like to come? I fill up my greatness tracker with these event invitations, with fun stuff, with checking in, with giving them something. And then that way, guess what? It's not a cold call, it's a warm call. And that's the way I've tricked my little brain into doing this stuff. So that's why this is strategically placed over time and you've got to figure out when this is and what this is going to be because then the rest of the month, not only are you talking about in your e-newsletter and in maybe some of your other stuff, you have the time then to start talking to people for that month and inviting them to this. All right, we're not done yet. So that was your fourth Wednesday. And then we came up with a couple more things. May Magnet. Um, what we're going to do at our office is, again, we kind of have this idea that if, if one person does it, we all can do it. There's going to be a design come out just like it came out this year. Uh, we did a summer event uh, festival schedule. And so you can do that or something else, like a big mailer. I hate a lot of the magnets that sit there with the 12-month calendar. I think people, they, they, a lot of times when I walk into a listing, I'm like, well, this face on this calendar doesn't match the listing agent that's in front of me. What happened? It's because there was no communication with the people the rest of the year. But if that magnet is something cool that they want to keep up for maybe half the year or over the summer, and it's part of a much larger touch campaign, that's then going to make sense. So for a while, I was like, I'm not even putting the stupid magnets up. I hate this idea. But if it's part of a true 33 touch relationship building, then that magnet is going to mean something to them. And it's going to stick on their refrigerator or in another place in their home office or wherever that there's actually a place to stick a magnet anymore since stainless steel doesn't seem to be a place um, that you're going to do that summer events calendar in May. So then there's a couple other things I want you to think about because I gave you, this is your raw calendar. Now we're still not done with this, but this is your raw calendar. But then a couple other things, letter of the heart. How many of you guys have ever done a letter of the heart? Okay. Letter of the heart, that is basically something that has nothing to do with sales. Saying, here's what's up with me, here's what's new with my world, tell me what's going on in your world. Totally out of the ordinary for most real estate agents. This is something that if you were really sitting in the corner with somebody at a restaurant and got to sit down and talk to them and had nothing to do with real estate, what would you talk to them about? Some major life events happen for a lot of us this year. It'll be happening in 2018 as well. I would like you to share those with your friends and your database. That's gonna go to your database. That's gonna go to those people in your database that mean something to you or should mean something to you and ask them for one back. Evidence of success. Now, remember again, these are the entire 12 month calendar. It's not gonna have, ev happen every month, but I have a suggestion for you that here's when it should happen. Your evidence of su success, the last Monday of the month. So again, mail or Mondays, that's gonna happen at the last Monday in March, June, September, and December. That is reminding people that you are doing business. Because, okay, yes, every day we're posting on social media, I just sold this, I just did this, I just did that. A lot of people, I hate to say it, aren't following you anymore, have blocked you, have deleted Facebook altogether, think Instagram is a scam for the Kardashians. So whatever they are doing, they may have blocked you or can't see you anymore or never were following you in the first place because they don't use that particular social media app that you and I love so much. So if they, guess what though? They can't throw away until they see it the postcard from you saying, oh, yep, they did something. And everybody loves to look at pictures of what? Houses of people. So you've got some pictures of houses you just sold over the last quarter. You've got some pictures of happy people, which you're supposed to be posting pictures of people because you are attending your closings, right? Mm -hmm. All of them. Mm -hmm. I don't see enough hands nodding and people, oh, all right. So that has to happen. And so that evidence of success has to happen quarterly by direct mail. Because again, not everybody's gonna see the rest of this. They may have fallen off your newsletter. They may have fallen off your social media. 
but they may not have had fallen off your direct mail piece yet. Okay, any questions so far? Got a few more things. This next one was inspired by Marky. So I've done Facebook Live. I love it. I think it's cool. I did not ever think that I should be doing that strategically. And what we have said, what Marky and I really have bonded over over time is that we are all about systems. All of this stuff <coughs> means nothing if you don't implement it. All this stuff means nothing if it doesn't happen. You can sit in a market class or a Nick class all day and get all this wonderful knowledge, and if you do nothing out of it, you just wasted your day. I hate to say that, because that would be a shame. We'd love to see you. But if you don't implement any of this, it doesn't mean anything. So Facebook Live, in order to really make something of it for myself, I had to figure out a day and a time that I would do it and say, this is gonna be when I do it, and I'm gonna announce it. Because then guess what, I'm accountable to everybody. And I'm gonna put it on my calendar. Our graphic designer created a little graphic for me. So if you look on my Facebook page from last night, I just posted and said, starting January 3rd, my Facebook Live is this time every week. So I'm suggesting to you, Wednesday is your Facebook Live day. I'm doing mine at lunchtime. Because what we now figured out, Mark, he's the first one to share this with me, is that if you are doing it the same time every week, that beautiful Facebook algorithm that none of us really understand magically starts to push that Facebook Live even more. What is the fight and the struggle right now in the industry? Video. Everybody wants to be the king of video. Facebook bought Instagram. They're in a fight with Snapchat. Everybody's mad at YouTube, which is owned by Google. And so everybody is trying to push the video content and be the video king. So that's why if I sit outside right now and do a Facebook Live, it's gonna pop up on your feed if we're friends, whether you want it to or not. It's gonna shove right to the top of it and it's gonna shove even more aggressively to the top of it if I'm doing it the same time every week. And guess what? That feels to people like you've got your own TV show. So talk about the Kardashians, now you can be Kardashian too, maybe just more common sense. So we, we will not be sharing this video with them, I guess. So every Wednesday, I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna put a arrow right down through it, every Wednesday is going to be your Facebook Live. So you know at whatever time, and again, you can do it whatever day works for you. Maybe we shouldn't all be doing them on Wednesday at the same time. Maybe you decide to do them on Saturday or Sunday because you've got your open houses scheduled so smartly, we'll talk about that in a minute, that you know when they're gonna be every week. How many guys are using a time block calendar right now? Ooh, that's sad. Okay, all right, a couple people. Wow, did my world change when I actually got up at a particular hour, got my workout done, and got in for my two hours of lead generation, and it was on my time block calendar. Um, I get more done now by noon than sometimes it used to get done by five o'clock, because I used to let life get in the way. Now, good luck, Marky knows from being with Exit about a week and a half now, that door goes, gets closed, and even though it's a glass office and I see you, I don't see you. I see my computer screen, who's telling me who's next to call, who's next to text, who's next to have an interaction with, and I'm writing my personal notes because that's my two hours a day. If you know when your open houses are gonna be, why aren't you talking about it? That is one of the saddest things I see right now is agents are out there doing open houses that are terribly poorly promoted. Um, there was a old concept called seventh level open houses. I, did, I played with that. Now we have an 11th level open house, an 11th level open house. Look at my LinkedIn blog and I've got some ideas for you on that. So that brings me to my next idea. We're not done yet. Boosting a post. How many guys boost posts already? All right. Marky knows a lot about that. Um, Travis Exit's graphic designer created a booklet about it as well. Boosting posts has again changed the game. Because boosting posts, you're not boosting the people you already know. My friends know that I'm in real estate. Wow, I do not have a problem with my friends deciding to use someone else. If they use someone else because they physically don't like me. They're probably not actually even my friends. They have made a conscious choice. People know I'm in real estate. That's my goal for all of you too. But the boosted post, take it out of the general community beyond your friendship group, beyond the people you're connected with. And so the boosted post, why would you not time block and say that every Friday you're gonna boost a post? Why would you choose Friday? Because guess what? That's before the weekend when your open houses are gonna be. And that's when your price reduction should have just happened, so you have people coming into your open house anyway. Do not waste your time by throwing an open house together on Saturday morning to please your client. They're gonna be even more mad when no one shows up. Mm -hmm. Plan your open houses earlier in the week. 
and we're going to talk to you in a second about how to do that, how to have those conversations. We'll boost those posts on Friday for that two days of the weekend because I really don't think people that are going to see it on Wednesday or Thursday are going to remember that there's an open house over the weekend. I'm going to save my pennies and I'm going to do it on Friday. Boost the post. Um, one more note and then I want to go into the weekly. Gifting to all past clients, VIPs, top 50s on the birthdays and housing anniversaries. The personal touch. Um, when was the last time that you got a personal note from your insurance agent, from your lender, things like that? That is a lost art. A personal note, a little gift card, something like that. I loved last year when 700 something people wrote on my Facebook wall. You know how many of them I remember? None. But I remember the three, that's sad, three people outside of my coworkers and immediate family that sent me a birthday card, three. So everybody says, oh yeah, I wished him a happy birthday. Send him a text, throw it on their Facebook wall. No, you personally acknowledge with a handwritten note. I love send out cards. These people are gonna definitely never sponsor an event of mine again because I'm gonna throw them under the bus. I love send out cards. I think it's a very nice thing. Is that a handwritten card? No, I don't like that idea. I like the idea of a personal handwritten card because nobody else does it anymore. So you can use technology. Our CRM product at the office does fit out a birthday card. I tried it once here. One year, it looked like a robot did it. Robot with cursive handwriting. That doesn't work for me. I want a personal card that says something personal for me that's relevant to what they're going through, experiencing joy or heartache at that time. I want to hammer that home because I am really really passionate about the personal notes. I'm seeing such a change in my business since I made the point to put people's phone numbers, addresses, and birthdays and anniversaries, their housing anniversaries into my phone. And that phone became a second reminder of all the people in my world that I've, that I've done business with that needed to be touched. All right, I'll get off my soapbox. And I will get on one more thing. I want to talk about the days of the week. Uh, if, when you sit down at that desk, home office, office office, wherever you're at, and you say, I'm going to do two hours of lead generation, and then you open up Facebook, you start responding to the first fire, and by fire I mean anything going on with your existing deals, and then something else happens, then somebody comes in to talk to you, and then all of a sudden it's noon, and then it's one, then you're tired, you do not have two hours a day of lead generation. You don't even have a half hour a day of lead generation. And I sit and I watch. I've been doing this for almost 20 years now. And I've been in almost every, I wouldn't say almost every brand, but I've been in several different brand concepts. And the same things happen at Exit, at At, at Remax, at I don't care where you are. Agents come in, sit down, they say they're gonna do it lead generation, they don't. This is nothing masterful that I'm teaching you. This is just common sense and focus. And I can't do it for you. No company can. What you have to do is two hours a day of lead generation. But what Core taught me was, if you just say I'm gonna do it and you sit at your desk, it is very easy to get distracted because guess what, we don't know what we're supposed to be doing. So what they've broken it down into is by day. So Monday is your top 50 and your VIPs. Your top 50 and your VIPs. Those are the people that you should be talking to on Mondays. And there's a script, not even a script, it's just common sense, Ford. What do you talk to people about? Family, occupation, recreation, dreams. Ford, family, occupation, recreation, dreams. Mondays, I would say, okay, well maybe the weekend was wild and crazy for you, or maybe the, your kids drove you nuts. Monday's your easy day. Who's it easiest to talk to about family, occupation, recreation, dreams? Your top 50 people, your VIPs, your core group of friends. You probably saw some of them over the weekend. You can you'll talk about what went on when you saw them. The party you guys were at, the house, the house you went to, whatever. Top 50 VIPs, top 50, that is the people that are closest to you, the people that are referring you business, your referral army, okay? Tuesdays, status calls, status calls. So when you pick up the phone for the two hours a day on Tuesdays, those are your status calls. Those are the people you are already under contract of some sort with. So that is your current clients. What is the biggest complaint people say when you call expired listings, for those of you that are actually calling expired listings, about their previous agent? They never called me. Exactly. They put a sign in the yard, they put it on the MLS, and they disappeared. I never heard from them again. I was the worst at that. I was real, real, very good at, ooh, wow, I'm going to do all this stuff. I'd do the stuff, but I wouldn't tell you what I was doing. And I wouldn't update you, and I wouldn't check in. 
When I started doing the Tuesday status calls, me, my sellers and I got into a much closer relationship. We were in this together. Now, we didn't have a lot of showing it this week. I think we need a price reduction. Here's the feedback from what we got. Can you work with me on this? And all of a sudden, people would work with me more. When I call up and I haven't talked to you in six weeks, hey, I need a price reduction. How are you doing? Well, how do you think that's going to go? Not well. If I'm in constant relationship with you, you know what? I'm really working this. I've got a Facebook blast out. I send it out to a bunch of agents. I, you know, I'll do that as call days. Wednesday, hot leads, but I'm just gonna call it leads. How many guys pay, be honest, pay for Zillow, realtor.com? Okay, I do a little bit too. Um, not a lot, but I do. Some of it's just to kind of keep up with the game. Um, it's a different relationship. So a referral, I love referrals. I get a lot of referrals, I'm good at it. That's where I make my money. Referrals, they don't really need as much maintenance because they're already in that relationship with you. You know who needs to kind of be dragged into the relationship and, hey, do you want to see stuff this weekend? I set up a search for you or I don't even know you and I know you called on a property. Tell me more about your search. I really need to handhold and touch these people at least five to seven times. That's my hot lead. So I'm going to call it leads because I don't think Zillow and Realtor.com are always that hot. But those are the people that I've either got them set up on a search already or I haven't even gotten a hold of them enough to have a search with them that are not already in relationship with me, that are not in these status calls. I think that is a very powerful day because here's what I know. I've got people filling out the greatness tracker at our office and they're filling it out and they're going, wow, I've got a lot of calls. I've got a lot of calls made. I'm doing stuff's happening, stuff's happening. My phone's ringing, but then they're still not making money. Then I ask them to fill out the lead tracker and the lead tracker is where you track everything that's coming in. And the lead tracker asks, how many times have you followed up? And boy, is it sad. There's, there's one chicken scratch on it. They followed up once. That is not enough to build a relationship. Wednesday is a very powerful day. Your hot leads. Thursday is just database and past clients. So Thursday are the people that are not your VIPs, so they're not the core people. But these are your past clients that you don't see a lot, that you should check in with, that you should want to invite to a cool seminar or social, something going on, okay? And then your last day, because I know what you're doing on the weekends. You're doing your open houses and your showings. We don't need a time block for that. Your last day is Friday. And that's what I call your builder day. When I say I, I mean core. They've taught me everything I've learned. This is nothing that I've come up with. The builder day is Yes, that could be a builder, but that is what you're gonna call your channel accounts, your aspirational accounts. People that will not just give you one deal, but they could give you dozens of deals. Attorneys, doctors, CPAs, insurance agents. Oh wait, people that you may have been on the, your blog and that maybe you've ended up on their blog. These are builder accounts. These are accounts that are gonna build your business. They're gonna build within your database. So this Friday is your toughest day. TJF, more like TJ when it's over. Because this is the day where you're like, oh God, this person's gonna hang up on me. I gotta fight through three secretaries and admins to get to them. They don't wanna talk to me. Well, these are the calls that if you build them up over time, it will be well worth the effort. Well worth the effort. So that is Friday is the builder calls. And in the meantime, if everybody hung up on you and nobody talked to you on Friday, guess what? You've got a social media boost going out to the rest of the world that can't hang up on you because you're in, in their face on Facebook and Instagram. So that is the 12 month calendar and the week's broken down. Do you guys have any questions? No questions, that was that easy. All right, it is truly that easy. So you have, and I thought the questions that we had peppered in were pretty good too. You have 12 months right here. Start writing it out, but don't just put farm piece. You need to know each month what the seminar or social is gonna be. You need to start targeting who the blog is gonna be who the video is going to be about or what the video is going to be about. You need to start thinking ahead of who you're going to be talking to. So this will live on going. And my advice to you is if you are not in an environment that this is the type of stuff going on, create that environment for yourself. Get a marker board, get an accountability partner. They don't have to be at your firm. They can be at any firm. Just get some other people in business with you. Um, keep up with my LinkedIn conversations. Keep up with my YouTube videos. I'm really dedicated to this. I have seen a noticeable change, not only in my volume, but in my profit and loss. How many guys are doing a profit and loss statement for your business every month? A couple of you. 
I have seen such a noticeable change. I've been able to cancel some advertising that wasn't doing anything. I've had better reviews from my clients. I can sleep easier at night because I know what's coming. Totally game changer, Stick, sticking to this schedule and to having a relationship built business, a referral based business. So thank you guys for your time. I'm gonna turn off my portion of this and then we're gonna have Marky come up and speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.